Um, thanks to uh, Beef and Lamb and Jason and um, yeah, for, for getting this session going. So just a little bit of background. Um, yeah, I work for Baker Ag as a sheep and beef consultant. Um, got sort of clients all over, all over the show really from Waikato through to Hawke's Bay to Taranaki to Southland, um, but predominantly um, Wairapa Dannyburg uh, based. And um, sheep breeding is my passion really. Um, I like cattle as well, but uh, you're pretty passionate about uh, sheep reproduction and, and um, high performing sheep systems. Um, yeah, been with Baker Ag, I think close to five years. Uh, before that, um, so where I got a passion, I'll talk a lot about condition scoring. Um, where I got a passion for this, I, I shepherded on a couple of places with um, some operators who are using condition scoring regularly. Um, so sort of been in the yards and, and done a lot of it. Um, I managed a farm for two and a half years, which we did a lot of condition scoring and uh, probably more recently worked with Trevor Cook, uh, developing some condition scoring workshops for beef and lamb. So um, yeah, I've put in, and I do a lot of condition scoring for clients at different times of the year. So yeah, I've put my hand on a, a lot of use over the years in terms of um, condition score um, and was just out yesterday actually on a client's farm having a bit of a bit of a look at some of the use. So yeah, that's a bit of bit of the background. Um, yeah, so I'll share my screen, Gary. Okay, so yeah, basically being tasked with uh, talking about management of views um, from now uh, through to lambing. So don't really know the, the range of um, uh, experience and skills who I'm talking to. So I'll, there'll be some, some back to basics, um, particularly around you would have, you, probably if you're into some of the beef and lamb events, you would have heard a lot about condition scoring. I make no apologies for going over it again because I'm I'm passionate about it and I've I've seen it work so well with um, practically on farm um, and and working with clients. So um, yeah, we'll we'll go over the range of things. So what basically the agenda is that coming up all right, Gary? Yeah, perfect, Griffin. Yep. So just want to paint a picture about if we're sitting here now. You know, what's our goal? I like to go, okay, what's the end goal? And, and to me, if we're just thinking about breeding ewes, um, forget about hoggets or, um, you know, we're just thinking about a mixed stage and two leaf ewes that, that should be in lamb now. Um, what are we trying to achieve? And to me, we're trying to achieve live lambs on the ground um, and a really good weaning weight uh, this coming um, Christmas. That's, that's the two pretty simple things. Um, so I'm going to go for a bit about you know what we're trying to achieve and what's the what's the prize what's the size of a prize. Um, I'm going to go a bit about you condition score. Um, then going to do a bit of interactive thing on the you management calendar, um, and yeah, basically management from now through to scanning and then from scanning to lambing. Um, so yeah, to to frame it up. Um, you know, a lot of people are short after the after the dry. Um, some areas are, are really, really bad. Um, some areas have had a slight recovery. Um, but what I'm seeing is most people are two to five hundred kilos of uh, dry matter per hectare, sort of down on um, on where they'd normally be. Um, it's quite scary when you quantify that. Um, you know, four hundred kilos of dry matter a hectare down is is pretty much two bales of uh, baleage. Um, you know, so if you're down that much on your feed per hectare, you'd have to have two bales of baleage sitting in your um, in every hectare of your farm. So it's quite it's quite scary how how yeah how some people are in terms of feed. Um, so what this is all about now, this management of ewes, is how we ration what little feed we've got um, and try and maximise our ewe reproduction. And and the guts of the presentation is really. Um, is feeding feeding ewes based on condition score, um, pushing ewes hard, like having the confidence to push push the right ewes hard, and it's amazing what they can um, what they can handle uh, if you're doing it at the right time of the production calendar, um, and you're doing it with the right conditions condition sheep. Uh, so yeah, ba basically this whole thing really is just feeding ewes on on condition, 
and trying to ration and allocate and, and save feed so we can get through to, um, through to set stocking. Okay, so I'll crack on. So what, what's the prize? Um, not gonna go into, does that come up clearly? Yep, good. Yep, okay, I won't ask that again. Um, I, weaning weight, there's always money left on the table um, in business with regards to weaning weight. Um, and, and the science in terms of cracking that weaning weight, uh, it starts with condition score at, uh, well, feeding, pre-lamb and condition score at, at lambing. And then as we progress through the season, uh, you know, from docking onwards, a lot of that weaning weight is derived from um, how you manage your pasture quality. Uh, it might be the ratio of your ewes that you have to a terminal sire. It might be how much herbs, herbs you have in your system when you're shedding ewes down onto it. But the prize is, is really large. If you, um, if you stuff up the management from now through to three weeks pre-lamb or, or lambing, um, it can have a really big impact on your, um, on your weaning weight. Um, this, these figures here uh, is an exercise. I, um, I looked at all the, all the science, um, looked at some of the records from the place I managed and, and clients I'm dealing with and did a bit of um, Farmax modeling. And, and simply this modeling took a 400 hectare farm, uh, 2000 mixed age and two doof uh, ewes. Uh, we assumed lambing at 140%. And um, 600 hoggets were mated at 85% lambing. Um, and then I just basically went through um, what, what would happen if we, all, all I did was all of the saleable lambs, um, so all the cow ewe lambs, all the mixed sex, you know, male lambs, we just sold them just for this here. We just sold them at weaning um, just, to, just to look at the influence lamb weaning weight would have on this size business. Um, so the base... The base was um, a 27 kilo um, weaning weight at 90 days of lamb age, which is typically when people wean a lot of their lambs. Um, yeah, 27 kilos, live weight, sold all the surplus lambs store, and I assumed a $3 a kilo uh, live weight store price. So the base model, the total from that sheep policy was circa $300,000. And then basically what, what I looked at is as we shift up the, um, up the spectrum and still sell everything store, so if we shift from 27 to 30, that added an extra 23K to the bottom line. Uh, up to 31, uh, $30,000 extra on the bottom line. Um, and then I quantify, I like to uh, kind of keep things really simple to, uh, hit home the impact when I'm on farm of farmers, but you know if you if you get this condition score right and manage pasture quality, and you and you lift your weaning weight say by three three kilos of live weight, that that's potentially another eleven dollars fifty a you uh, a you, which is which is pretty exciting returns. Um, the other thing which is not on here, we also optimised the Farmax model post weaning because there's a whole lot of whole lot of things post weaning, which a good weaning weight does for you. You know, you kill more lambs off mum on a higher schedule. Your average sale date is earlier through the autumn. Um, so potentially on the higher schedules, you have less, less lambs on, less worms. Um, and then all the other added benefits, heavier ewe lambs, um, all, all those sort of things, which are, which are quite big. Heavier ewe lambs, you can potentially make more and then heavier tutus. Um, an interesting fact, which, uh, which this modeling brought out is that for every kilo of weaning weight uh, lift on a lamb, you get five to 6% more lambs um, killed prime off mum. And that's drafting down to 17%. So, um, sorry, that's drafting down to 17 kilos. Uh, it all depends how your lambs are yielding, but that to me is a pretty good figure. Kilo of weaning weight lift, five to 6% more lambs off to the works, which is the most efficient and profitable lamb. Okay, so that's that's the weaning weight prize which we're uh, which we're chasing. Um, I just thought it was in, there's there's a lot of pub talk about weaning weights, <laughs> and there's not a lot of good hard data because it's often you'll just someone might just 
weigh a unit load of lambs or um, it might be the top one. So and you're busy at weaning and it's the last thing you're going to be doing is trying to get a check, you know, a weaning weight. But some people do monitor their business in terms of how their weaning weights are going. And um, I've just chucked up here what we see in commercial uh, in commercial operations. Um, this is a business here, 162% lambing. Um, so a lot of probably 15, 16% of the lambs are born as triplets. Um, and these are an example of 90 day weaning weights. Here's another high performing business we deal with, 32 kilo weaning weight. Uh, here's, a, here's a big business um, that's got a large area of flats and, and plantain clover. Um, and they shed a lot of, a lot of um, mixed age and to-do views down onto these uh, plantain clovers. But this gives you a bit of an idea, some pretty impressive weaning weights. And then oh, they are some are dry and then some some are safe. Hill country, but sort of look, looking across here, the lambing percent's up around the 150, and these businesses are weaning about 32 kilo, uh, 32 kilo lambs, which uh, it's quite good to have a bit of bit of data. Okay, is there any questions coming on that that there, Gary? No, we're all good. Just wonder, yeah. Richmond, um, you know, yeah, do you deal with a number of different people? Um, how many people have good? How many people record good data on weaning weight? Is it something you think, you think should, should be just an absolute must do? I think it's if you. Well, I like to know if I make a management change or I spend a bit more money or I treat my ewes differently. I like to, I like to know it's having an impact, and I like to, I'd like to be able to track my business to see whether I'm improving. And on most hill country or even properties that have got a lot of breeding ewes. Biggest thing driving your income is the kilos of lamb weaned, so that's a big driver. So I'd be I'd be wanting to know where I'm at. If if I'm not at where I should be, what why aren't I? And then the management changes I'm making, am I tracking where I want to go? So not a lot of I'd say less than five percent of people would would do it, do a proper sample and get a proper weaning weight. It's just I mean it's a busy time of the year, but yeah, I'd I'd definitely be re recommending it's pretty pretty helpful. Cheers. Okay, so the next prize, which happens a bit earlier on, is um, is lamb survival. Um, so all of this is going to tie in when I start talking about management of ewes. But basically, we want our um, we want to get our ewes uh, to lambing and, and condition score three or better. And probably the the key thing is we want to have a tight condition score range we don't want to have a, a big tail end because it's it's always the the tail end or I say the percentage of views that are below condition score three that sets the ceiling on your flock um, performance and and a big one around feeding pre lamb which we'll talk about later and and condition score at lambing is is what how it impacts lamb survival so you can see here I've just used across the top I've just used a pretty standard um, a twin single scanning of 170%. So that's with, without triplets, just, yep, twin single. And then I've gone through the different um, survival percentages. So some people to, will talk lamb wastage. So this 80% survival would be 20% wastage. And when you take, when you take your 170% scanning, you put 80% survival, that's a lambing percent or a you call it lambing or docking percent of um, not docking because that's through the pen. This is the lambing percent of one one thirty six percent. Does anyone want to chuck in um, what they reckon the industry industry sits at in terms of survival or, or lamb wastage? Good chance to type a question or a comment in the chat box. Eighteen percent potentially, Richmond. Someone said someone else said eighteen to twenty percent wastage. Good. Fifteen yep. percent. Good. So that's that's um that's good. The I don't quite. It's been quoted around, and I'm not quite sure how people established this without doing whole scale studies of scanning to lambing results, but. 
it, it's around the 18 to 20 percent so 18 percent is here so 82 percent survival or 18 percent wastage and 20 percent is here so the industry yeah I, I i think it's more like 18 to 22 percent um the lamb survival sits in we monitor a lot of discussion groups um and there's a range, but it comes out at about 17 to 18% um, in, in a lot of the businesses we look at. But the interesting thing is there are, there are some operators who are performing at this level and consistently performing at this level. Uh, this is 88% survival or 12% wastage. So off a of 170% scanning, they're getting, they're docking or they're lambing to the RAM 150%. And um, so, which is which is quite impressive. Twelve twelve percent wastage, and um, we'll talk about it. But the biggest influence on that lamb survival, I see. I've put weather down the bottom. We'll talk about that. The, the biggest influence, the boxes that you can tick and that you can actually have control over is is managing your condition score on your ewes, feeding three weeks pre lamb. Uh, U defs, U defs can really knock around a lambing percent. And as soon as I see high UDEFs, um, I really challenge clients to look at, you know, it might be a flock structure issue. Clients might be taking too many older older ewes and older triplet ewes love to fall over and put all four legs in the air. Um, and you might have some metabolic issues pre-lamb. Um, so UDEFs can really knock around the lamb percent and weather. Um, talk about that a bit later on. But it doesn't have as much, I mean, Sure, a uh, three or four day southerly and, and easterly can really knock around lambs, but, but it, it is blamed, I think, a lot more than it should be um, because someone side by side, you know, someone with good condition score use and have fed them right, and the neighbour with poor condition score use, the one that's, and they get the same weather bomb, the one that's got better fed use, good condition score is going to have a much better result than the, um, than the one with poorer condition use. Uh, just, just uh, we had Wiper Farmer of the Year and, and one standout business. Um, this is their survival for, uh, for three years. So pretty amazing, 12% wastage or 88% survival. Um, they were consistently lambing over 150%. And what was really interesting actually was the, the low U the U defs and missing, um, or just the sheep defs and missing, which were mostly the breeding use um, in, the, in the very low range here. I think beef and lambs average is about 6% defs and missing, and most of your defs and missing are coming from set stocking to, um, to docking, whether it's cast or bearings or metabolics. Okay, so I'll quickly whip through this because you've probably heard it a heap, but the science of having a U at condition score three. There's plenty of videos on, on what a condition score three is. But studies have shown, you can see the bullet points here. So studies shown that, that ewes at lamb in a condition score three or better, they give birth to heavier lambs. So you're ahead of, ahead of the eight ball to start with. They have increased mothering ability, um, not likely to walk off the, off the lambing site. Uh, they produce more milk and colostrum, and I call that white gold. That's the milk and colostrum is the highest ME feed that your lamb can get. So you wanna you wanna maximize every opportunity to get plenty of that high ME feed to them. Um, lambs have highest higher survival. Lambs are heavier at weaning, and also, which I think people underestimate, is ewes are heavier at weaning, particularly in the more dry areas like the Wairapa. Um, if we can wean a ewe in a good body condition, um, it's, it's money in the bank in terms of hanging on for the summer. Just, just Richard, I've got a couple of questions coming. Just, sorry, the slide before, do you want to jump back a slide there? Um, and, and I've had a question come in, go slide before that, about um, questioning, and I, yeah, I, I guess, I'm assuming it's talking about the clients down the bottom, the people down the bottom, you got there, the wire ship far over here, but what's their stocking rate is the question. And, and <laughs> I guess, I don't know if you know their stocking rate off the top of your head, but I guess there's a question there around the link between stocking rate um, and land survival. Yeah, 
So this business here is probably for a summer dry area, sort of only growing probably seven tonne, six and a half tonne of dry matter. They have an extremely high stocking rate. If you look in a pure sense at 30th of June, this business has a very high stocking rate, but they've actually got, they've actually got levers as they go through to, um, to lambing. They have very, very good condition ewes. They have quite a few winter trade lambs that go out before lambing. They've got a few cattle that go out uh, grazing, but they are still, because they lamb their hoggets, they're still, they're still lambing their, they're still spreading their twin ewes at seven and a half to the hectare, which I would say, you know, a low twin set stocking rate. I mean, it all depends how many cattle you're sprinkling in with them and how much feed you're lambing on, but a low one I would have thought would be five, you know, five to five and a half twin ewes to the hectare. But by no means this business hasn't got a, a low, um, yeah. Stocking rate, but but I guess at a number like seven and a half, you know, there's there, there won't be many condition score ewes below three in that sort of flock, will they? No, they they're extremely good at feeding to condition, um, and they they're continuously um, recycling tail end ewes, um, and just taking the taking those tail end ewes out of the, out of the mob and reducing mob pressure, so they have a very even condition score when they come into lambing. Yeah. Cool. Another question, how many clients have you got that measure lamb survival for, from individual paddocks? Is that something that you encourage as well? Oh, yeah, I definitely reckon, um, yep, quite a few clients have either a diary or a spreadsheet with um, what set stocking rates, you know, what, it's good to know what country can handle. Some paddocks handle more ewes than others, but they have, you know, five, ten years of data of, of number of ewes set stocked in a paddock and then what, what comes through the pen, um, which is more your docking percentage, you know, your lambs divided by the ewes that come through the pen. Um, and yeah, and they certainly, that information's gold for um, getting a bit of a feel whether there's uh, tomos or it's a, it's a poor paddock for twins um, and you might readjust where you spread your ewes. It might be a single, might be a better single paddock. So yeah, I, th I think it's quite good to build a bit of a build a bit of history. Um, you have you have I think you have to be aware of um, you know it might be first cycle use or second cycle use. You just got to be aware of you know if a storm comes through in the second cycle it, and you think a paddock's docked really poorly or an area, it might just be that they, they got absolutely hammered. Hopefully, that answers the question. Yep, no, that's cool. Good, thank you. Right, so just carrying on lamb survival. This is um, this is some work. Uh, there's been a heap of work, heap of um, science, and it's quite fascinating when you actually talk to people at Massey and yeah. how they did some of this. And this is some work that Trevor Cook uh, did. So it's flogged a bit of stuff from Trevor Cook, but um, you know, these are some pretty big figures. So if we're talking lamb survival, um, decreases five percent for every half a condition score lost in the three to four weeks pre-lamb. So you'll hear me talk about this three to four weeks pre-lamb soon. Uh, survival decreases 5% for every half a condition score below three at lambing. So this whole talk today is gonna to be about trying to get our ewes through to lambing in a condition score three. Uh, ewes at a condition score three and a half versus two and a half produce twice the amount of colostrum. And I talked about how colostrum is the white gold. Um, the fascinating thing for me is that um, yeah, if you stuff if you stuff you condition up, um, lambs take longer to stand and suckle, and which is fine if you if the weather's all nice, but it's pretty risky in in, in poor weather. Weaning weight, just tying it into that weaning weight prize. I think the simplest way to remember it is. Um, Fat ewes wean fat, fat lambs. I'm not talking trying to get everything huge and obese, but a fat ewe or a condition score three ewe will wean a good lamb. Um, and, and the interesting thing is that first bullet point, a ewe produces 40 to 50% of her total milk yield uh, in the first four weeks after lambing. Um, and it's pretty much done and dusted by eight weeks. So you, 
you have a very short period to grow those lambs at the 300 grams a day plus on that and that high ME feed. Um, and, and the interesting thing is that if you, if you muck it up, if you muck, uh, where's that bullet point? Um, yeah, improving feed after lambing. So if you get, you go through the winter and you have your rotation of death and you don't manage the tail end and you, um, <clears throat> and I, I'm definitely not in this camp. People pushed, I think, feed covers too much historically. How, I mean, feed covers are essential, uh, you know, are important. You have to have a certain amount of feed, but I would far rather have my ewes in better condition lambing on slightly shorter covers, knowing I've lambed them at the right lambing date and I've set stock them at the right date, uh, at the right rate, than having a whole lot of skinny ewes of a big tail end and lambing on this magical 1500 cover. Because why that is, is that this point here, improving feed after lambing is not going to improve the ewes lactation output. If you lamb her skinny or you lamb her below three, you can't catch that up. You've actually, you've actually done the damage. You've set the milk yield um, and the colostrum and doesn't matter if your property finally grows underneath them, you've, you've missed that opportunity. So there's a, real, there's a real balance. Like I'm definitely in the camp of trying to main, you know, it's, it's always hard, that tightrope four set stocking, but I'm always in the camp of trying to squeeze through winter, manage the condition on my ewes, get to lambing with good condition ewes and enough feed rather than locking them all down to try set stock on these huge covers with skinny ewes. Um, so lamb weaning weight uh, decreases 6% if more than half a condition score is lost in the three to four weeks before lambing. Uh, so you'll, that, here, here, that's come up again. The weaning weight decreases 6% for every body condition score below three at lambing. So kind of what, what, I'm, what, you, what you begin out of this is, is that condition score three at lambing is key and how we're feeding three to four weeks pre-lamb is also key. Um, so we'll, we'll carry on with that. I talked to a vet and he showed me some really interesting figures about clients he'd been, he'd been monitoring. Um, monitoring and... Um, he basically said it was clear from the work he did that those ewes that are in condition score two are the ones that are producing you the handbags, he called them, the 20 kilo lambs, the little rats that stick around until now and you hope that the fielding sale lifts and you poke them in there for some finisher to pick up. So Gary asked me to, is there any questions, Gary? No, you're all good. Carry on there, Richmond. I'm just, just going to quote you on your 20 kilo handbags though. That's, that's, that's quite a good way of looking at it. 2.5 condition score use produced 20 kilo handbags. Richmond beat them at L. Two, body, score, body condition score two. two um, Gary asked me to, the biggest battle I have, I think, with uh, clients is, is trying to get them to buy into this condition scoring. Um, one, I think to start with, it's a bit of it's a bit of confidence and and sort of getting tied up and being trying to be too exact with how they condition score, um, and th and probably thinking it's a it's quite a lot of time. Um, it is a very efficient and fast tool once you get used to it, and sometimes trying to quantify the the dollar value um, can help get you over the line in terms of using this tool a bit more regularly. So we did, admittedly, it was last winter um, when cow U prices were a bit higher and the store land price uh, looked a bit better. Um, we tried to quantify, we basically did some work, we bought all the science in around lamb survival, lamb weaning weight and heavier use. And we said, if we have a hundred, if we have a hundred mixed age use that are condition score two and a half and we feed them normally like a lot of businesses will feed them um we fed them normally post scanning so we said they're just left in in the big mob they're rotating we feel like the amount of feed that's going into the big mob is right it's maintaining them so you're left in a big mob fed fed normally or, or maintenance um 
and then we extrapolated out what that might look like in terms of the impact on lamb survival, lamb weaning weight, ewe deaths, and ewe carcass weight. We then said, we've got another 100 ewes here, exactly the same ewes, same scanning, that are conditioned to score two and a half at scanning, because we've taken them out. Let's feed them ad lib. Let's, let's crank them from um, scanning to lambing. And you only have about a, I reckon about a five week window to actually impact condition score after scanning. Because uh, as you progress closer to lambing, it's just all going into the placenta and, and baby. And they're just using too much, you know, just can't get the weight on them. Um, so we assumed in this modeling that we would lift the U's, this 100 U's from two and a half to three. Uh, which half a condition score is about four kilos of live weight. And so when we extrapolated it all out um, and used the science around what they've seen in terms of increased survival and weaning weight, um, that half a condition score from scanning to lambing gave us a return of $27 a head um, or $2,700 per 100 ewes, which is kind of the figure which is easy to remember. Um, and... People, I suppose, the biggest thing I've learned from a, a, a guy which I learned heaps from when I was farming was um, when you're a breeding operation, um, numbers on the ground, looking after capital stock and feeding ewes well, uh, there's always a good return. And a lot of people are hesitant to divert feed away from trade lambs or some other class of stock to feed a tail end ewe there's really good value in it. So when we looked at the feed that this 100 ewes ate on maintenance and what this 100 ewes ate, um, we said they're going to eat more because you're feeding them more. If we take what each of those you the, the, the additional feed above maintenance they ate and then divided that into the, into the margin per head, the return for every kilo of dry matter was about 66 cents which you, you're not going to beat. Like a winter trade lamb makes about 40 cents. Um, you know, a dairy cow, yeah. But it's an exceptional uh, return. Um, it'll be lower this year, but it'll still be north of 30 cents a kilo, which is a very good return on that, uh, on that feed lifting a, a, a ewe. Just, just, so this, you just you just mentioned that. So you said a winter trade lamb is, is say, 40 cents. I mean... Yep. Do you, do you want to just discuss that a bit more? Um, I mean, 40 cents is a pretty good one to trade lamb. What about, you know, if you've got extra feed and you put into wieners or cattle or anything else, you know, is there anything that'll come close to that one to trade lamb in a, in a t t typical breeding system? Yeah. I mean, there's always, there's always very good value in keeping on growing your in lamb hoggets because we know, we know the importance of, getting them heavy and having a good to do at the other end. Um, I don't know. You, you, on a breeding farm, you normally set with your replacement heifers, but if you had a bit of a trading component and you were tossing up, buying some cheap wiener bulls, you know, might be 200 kilo wiener bulls at the moment. You could pretty simply, work, and say you were just buying them now store and you were looking to sell them store as a yearling. You could say, you could, you could work out on the ingoing price and you crystal ball for the outgoing price um what what your margin will be what your return per kilo of dry matter they eat and you could go well i actually think there's better return and sticking it into some skinny use in terms of what they'll give me at the other end i mean uh, you, you know you, you, you're talking about a good cattle trade might be 20 or 30 cents a poor yep. cattle trade might be 10 or 15 i mean that's that's markedly different from 66 isn't it like that, yep. the size of that difference we're not talking about a small gain we're talking about a massive gain aren't we yeah. And I mean, you have to, you have to come back to, you know, do we need to update this? So we've got, uh, can you see this clearly the table? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we assumed a, a 1.7 kilo um, winning weight advantage on the ones that are two and a half versus three. Uh, we assumed a, a, a 1.7 kilo heavier cow U weight. So there's $8 a head, head there. Um, and yeah, we assumed a three dollar eighty uh, kg of live weight. Like some of those earlier lambs this year were over four dollars. Um, some years it's been two seventy. Some years it's been three dollars. So 
if we pulled this back to say three dollars, it, it's not going to be the sixty-six cents, but it's still going to be pretty um, pretty strong. Um, and just, just out of interest, on a hundred U's, that there was the the extra dry matter consumed because you've got the other ones on maintenance and the other ones you, you add lib. Uh, so I mean, I lifting a tail in U through the winter, through from post scanning and uh, even post weaning to get a better scanning. There's always, you know, it always competes with a lamb trade every time I've looked at it. I'm not selling, I'm not saying sell all your trade lambs and look, just keep lifting your ewes. It's, you've got to have that balance right. But if you, if you use a lot, then there's an opportunity. Okay. Um, so if I, if I put this all together and, and sort of see what's, what's achievable, um, got a number of businesses and this is, we've put the names on them because it's actually been in the ag letter so it's public, but there's some pretty cool results and there's some pretty good operators doing some, you know, amazing, um, amazing results. You can see across all these businesses, these are, these are some of the scanning. Uh, this is what they're converting off those scans, um, and these are hill country properties. And here's some of your here's some of your weaning weights. Probably the the interesting thing for me is the the lambs killed prime off mum. So some of these businesses are up around 48, 50 percent lambs killed prime off mum, and that's we're not talking a 14 and a half kilo lamb. Some of these are drafting to you know getting 17 kilo lambs or 16 and a half kilo lambs, um, and they, these. These businesses are extremely aggressive at managing tally and ewes, ensuring you know, ewes are good condition and they lactate well and, and wean a good lamb. 